Uh, our next speaker is Adi Abalafia, who is uh, from Tel Aviv. Adi is a, a young rising star in this whole area of IOL calculation and toric IOL prediction, and he's going to share with us some of the results of toric IOLs using the Barrett calculator. Okay. Thank you, Doug, for your kind words. Um, Okay, so modern cataract surgery have become a combined rehabilitative and refractive procedure. And uh, Tori Carrells have a major role in this new era, becoming the standard of care for patients with pre-existing corneal astigmatism who undergo cataract surgery. However, the results following Tori Carroll implantations are not always um, quite predictable. Surgically induced astigmatism, Tori Carroll misalignment, corneal astigmatism measurements and the methods of calculation are all factors that might contribute to unexpected residual astigmatism. So today I'm going to talk about the letter two and let's start with corneal astigmatism measurements. Now there are many devices in the market which use different technologies to measure the corneal astigmatism. Most of them are measuring the anterior corneal measurements but some can measure the posterior corneal as well. Furthermore, not all of them are measuring at the same location, and some will have better predictability and accuracy than others. So it is important to be familiar with your devices and to know their strengths and weaknesses. It is also important uh, to validate your data, and useful checklists are available on Dr. Hill's website. Now, always be alert and try never to cruise on automatic pilot mode. I want to show you an extreme example of what can happen when one stops paying attention to details. Now this patient was referred to me several years ago with a huge myopic surprise following an uneventful cataract extraction. Now on a closer look, one can see that something is strange. A mean K value of 34 diopter is quite unusual. So we repeated the keratometry measurements of this patient and to our surprise there were more than 13.5 diopter difference in the mean K values. And apparently this lady was wearing her contact lenses during her pre-op evaluation. How bad is that? Now, you can imagine how unhappy she was with her outcome. And my take home message is always be alert and validate your measurements. If something doesn't look right, repeat the measurements and try to figure out what's going on. Now, before determining the corneal astigmatic power and meridian, it is essential to uh, make sure that we are dealing with the symmetrical and regular astigmatism. And then uh, one should follow uh, the method methodology by Warren Hill of using primary and secondary supporting instruments. And we do that for determining the steep meridian. And we repeat the same process for the power difference between the meridians. Now, uh, for our primary device, we would like to use the most uh, accurate machine available. But as we all know, uh, good repeatability is essential for high accuracy. So what we did, we evaluated the differences in corneal astigmatism measurements in 28 right eyes of healthy volunteers one week apart. And we did that by using the Owlmaster 500 and the LensStar devices for the same eyes. And in a perfect world, all these dots should be plotted against the zero mark. But as you can see, this is not the case for both devices. However, the LensStar device had a significantly lower variance as compared to the Almaster, and when the LensStar was used, more than 96% of the eyes had a difference below 0.5 diopters between the two measurements as opposed to uh, about 78% with the Almaster. So what about accuracy? When, when we evaluated the errors in predicted residual astigmatism, uh, following toricarol implantation, the lens star had a significant lower centroid prediction error and variance as compared to the Almaster. So let's move now for the methods of calculation. Now, today we know that standard keratometry and topography machines tend to yield inaccurate results in assessing the net corneal elastigmatic power. It has been now four years since uh, Doug Koch had reminded us the role of toricarol calculation um, uh, the role of the posterior cornea in toricarol calculation and the next obvious step was to try to figure out how we should implement this knowledge in our daily practice. So one solution is to use intraoperative aberrometry. Another solution is to use standard toricarol calculators with a nomogram like the Baylor. And the third option is to use the bariatoric calculator. 
Now, as you heard, uh, this calculator is available on the ACRS and the APSRS website, as well as on the LensStar device. Now, this is an all-in-one solution. It uses the universal two formula in order to predict the post-op spherical equivalent. It uses the effective lens position in order to calculate the RL cylinder power correction at the corneal plane. And it uses a mathematical model in order to estimate the net corneal astigmatism by utilizing anterior corneal measurements. So um, this is one of our recent studies um, in which we evaluated the prediction of refraction outcomes with toric RL implantation by using different uh, devices and different methods of calculation, including the baratory calculator. Now, this was a retrospective study, and it included patients who, uh, 68 eyes, who undergone uneventful cataract extraction with the toric RL implantation. And for the measuring devices, we used the OWL master, the lens star, and the atlas topographer. And for the methods of calculation, we use the Alcantory calculator, which uses a fixed ratio in order to estimate the cylinder power of a toric RL at the corneal plane, and the holiday and the baratory calculators, which are using the effective lens position for the same purpose. Now, and what we found out is the combination of the lens star and the baratory calculator yielded the highest proportion of eyes with a prediction error below or equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1 diopter. Now, when we used the Alcantory calculator, both devices, the Owl Master and the LensStar, yielded against the rule prediction errors with a centroid of more than 0.5 diopter. Similar results were seen for the Holidatory calculator. However, using the Baratory calculator yielded a centroid prediction errors which were close to zero. Now, what about using standard toric calculators with direct measurements of the posterior cornea? Now, theoretically, this should be the most accurate method in assessing the net corneal astigmatism. However, our personal experience with a Pentacam device was somewhat disappointing. Uh, in a different study with a similar design, we evaluated the accuracy of direct measurements of the posterior corneal curvature. And we did that by uh, calculating the errors in predicted residual astigmatism in 99 eyes using the OWL master and the Pentacam device. Now, when we use the OWL master measurements with a holiday toric calculator, uh, we saw uh, against the rule prediction errors with a center rate of more than 0.5 diopters, same as we saw in the previous study. And by using the Pentacam device, using the total corneal refractive power as suggested by the manufacturer, the center rate prediction errors were slightly lower, but on the expense of higher uh, standard deviation. Now, a combined vector of the owl master measurement and the posterior cornea, as was measured by the Pentacam, showed better results. However, the most accurate results were seen with the baratory calculator with only the owl master measurements. Now, this result suggests that using direct measurements um, of the posterior cornea by this device may not be accurate enough in this stage and should be addressed with caution. So in summary, the outcomes of toric RL implantation can be optimized by using appropriate measuring devices and appropriate methods of calculation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ari. Uh